Hello. Welcome to Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever. I'm Jackie McKeever. On Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever, we talk about faith, finances, books, and business. Why? Because your victory starts here. It starts with the conversation. You can find a video version of this episode on my YouTube channel. You simply, to find my YouTube channel, you go to www.jackiemckeever forward slash links. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Hello, everyone. Hello, go-getters. Y'all, today I'm doing another episode of Morning Tea, honey, where we grab our cup. Y'all see, I got the cup. Grab our cup pour some hot water in it, a little honey for sweetness, two tea bags, not in that order, and we sip on that tea. Y'all know when I talk about the morning tea, y'all, we're talking about things that are going on in the universe. Y'all, so today's topic is the American Idol Dream. That's right, the American Idol Dream. So let me tell y'all a little bit about myself for those of you who are new, who don't know me. Those of you who've been here a minute, thank you all for returning. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my podcast or to my YouTube channel or however you're following me. Thank you. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie McKeever. I am a business coach with an MBA and a graduate certificate in accounting. What I do is I am on a mission to help individuals stop self-sabotaging their success, get productive with sales strategy, and help them get some paying clients. Enough of that about me, but on here on Victory Chat, of course, I'm your host, and we're talking about books, we're talking about business, we're talking about faith, and we're talking about finances. But today, we're talking about the entertainment business or the singing business of American Idol, the big old dream of American Idol. Um, Because first of all, people often, they compete for these contests because they want the money, they want this uh, record deal because they believe that they have this talent, but it's a business, y'all. Remember, it's a business, so we're going to talk about it. Y'all ready? Come on now, let's talk. So the American Idol dream, why are we even interested in even talking about that? Let me tell y'all a little bit more about American Idol. I'm going to pull up a little bit. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay, so American Idol is an American singing competition. It's a television series that Simon Fuller uh, produced, is produced by uh, Fumanel or Freeman, Fremantle North America and 19 Entertainment. And it was distributed, distributed by <laughs> Fremantle North America, which is a production company. It first aired on Fox um, around June the 11th in 2000, and it went on for 15 seasons until April 2007, I mean, excuse me, uh, 2016. And they went off the air and people's like, what? Why is American Idol going off the air? Well, they decided to come back after two years of being off the air. I don't know what happened, how they got the show revived. Maybe they had to redo some things. Maybe it was contracts. I don't know for sure. But this is not what it's about, right? This is not what this podcast is about. I'm giving you a little brief history for those who may not know much or remember about American Idol. 
I, for one, when it first came on in the two around 2002, I learned about uh, American Idol because my kid, one of my kids' uh, cousins, was watching American Idol. And I was like, "What is that? What is that?" And during that time, um, truth be told, um, I it was during the time the ending part where. Uh, Kelly Clarkson won, and the, the next season went. So I wasn't a faithful watcher, to be honest. Um, I watched Tids and, and Bits. Um, I'm more of the, the type of person, which the reason why I love Hulu and apps like that is because they allow you to watch the show after it's aired. Like, I am one of those who will record. Use, during that particular time, I would record any show I wanted to watch and watch it later because I did a lot of working. And I had a busy life, y'all. We all be busy sometimes. And anyway, so they revived this show. It's airing on ABC now. Um... And it's in season five. And the host for, since it's been revived for the, I guess the last five years or whatever, is um, Luke, what's his name? Um, excuse me, Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, and my favorite, Lionel Richie. Y'all. So in this podcast episode, I am going to talk about the American Idol dream, but I'm going to uh, try to convey a motivation for you because um, this is a business and people don't understand just because you're not voted American Idol, you don't win the season does not count you out of the running for success. Because many people have began to be successful just for um, getting that far, getting to Hollywood and getting on uh, on TV and or getting to the auditions. They were able to catapult their career. They may not have been a Kelly Carson or Ruben Stutter or Fantasia uh, now Taylor. Uh, uh, Carrie Underwood or Jordan Sparks, but they were successful, okay? I mean, I do enjoy this show. Another thing that sparked this conversation is I was watching, you know, some of the shows that airs. I told y'all I lie. I'm a Hulu girl. I like to watch Hulu and Netflix and all those jazzes because it let, allows me to watch the show after the fact, right? when I, things slow down for me because I work a lot. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the host. Um, all of them have experience there. Um, they all have been successful in their career, but through success, they've also had failure. So their failure somewhat led to their success. Can you believe that failure can lead you to success? I mean, because failure can, um, yes, it's a, this is about the, uh, uh, the American Idol dream, but I want to tell you a little bit about the hosts. While the, I really like these hosts, um, Katy Perry, um, she's had her share of failures because um, she's a, if y'all don't know her, she's an American singer, songwriter, actress, um, television personality she sings like a pop rock disco kind of music um she came from the church um her katie katie's parents are pentecostal pastors and believe it or not her first album when she was around 16 um was self-titled in uh 2001 and it failed it failed and she was she had a record deal where she produced that self 
album and with Red Hill Records, and it wasn't successful. And but she knew that she wanted to sing, and she knew that she had passion. She had an this ideal. Uh, she wanted to be a singer songwriter. That's what she had a desire. That's what she felt like her calling was was. So at 17, she moved and she landed a, a another album deal with a, another record deal that wasn't Christian music. It wasn't a Christian a rock or contemporary music. And of course, uh, she began a career to what we know it, know it, had her ups and downs, just like the rest of us do, to become a success. She failed. Her failure led to success because three things, and I'm going to tell y'all once I tell you a little bit about these hosts, why I believe that they're uh, a perfect match uh, for this season, just for this these last five years, this period right now, right? Katie, according to some Celebrity Net, uh, so according to Celebrity Net, her net worth is three hundred and forty million. Then one of the other judge is Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan, uh, government name is Thomas Luther. Brian. Um, he is a country singer and a songwriter. He was raised by a peanut farmer. <laughs> a peanut farmer. Um, and I chuckle because that is the most humblingest um career that you can have to be a peanut farmer. That's just my opinion anyway. It won't buy you a stick of gu uh, a bubble gum, so that ain't worth the calories, so don't even dwell on that. But in, he's had his share of failures. One, I mean, he's had tons of awards, but one particular uh, period in 2017, he was nominated for eight different types of of award, but out of the eight, he only won one. He won um, the CMT, the Country Music, I don't remember what T stands for, uh, Performance of the Year. And according to Celebrity Net Worth, he's worth $160 million. And then there is my favorite because I've known his music all my life, <laughs> literally all my life. Um, and that's Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie, Richie um, he is from uh, uh, Tusky, Alabama. And for those of you who didn't know, he's a graduate from Julia, Juliet Township High School. Um, which is on the East Campus of Juliet, uh, Illinois. He also got a tennis scholarship. Y'all, I didn't know until I looked up this, this about him, and I've been knowing who Lionel Richie was for years, right? But according to sources, he, grad he got a tennis scholarship because he played tennis, um, and he graduated to Tuskegee Institute, uh, and he graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in the degree of economics. Honey, go ahead, Lionel, go ahead. I like you even more than I found that out. And according to Celebrity Net Worth, his net worth is $200 million. Now, just Mind you, this net worth is just what they say. They not in their bank account. They're not in their savings account. So they're just estimating. They're just guesstimating. Okay, so it could be more. I just believe that Lionel Richie's may or may not be more, you know, because he's been in the business a long time. I know that when he started, you know, artists and stuff weren't making the 
uh, especially black artists weren't making as much money as they are now um they, they were being ripped off like i ain't gonna lie allegedly they were being ripped off and they weren't getting the endorsements like they are now you know they're able to uh, diversify um lionel richie richie also this is something i didn't know he studied divinity to become a priest and a, a, a episcopal yeah and i can never say that word word right church okay episcopal there it is episcopal church but he decided that he was not priest material and he wanted to continue his music career and i probably would have never known him if he had decided to become a priest so i'm glad because his music really touched my soul in particular periods of time he's a singer and i i know he wrote songs as well i read somewhere a long time ago that he read he wrote he's a songwriter but i know he's a singer um he's a singer and he was a saxophonist for the commodores back in the mid 60s right in 1982 he set off on a solo career uh i'm trying to get to the part that i where i really started loving him like i did not even no, he was one of the Commodore's uh, group members until after I had started digging, you know, liking him more after he did this duet with uh, Diana Ross. Ross, And all I'm going to give you, it says, boom, 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 boom. And that's all I'm going to give you. Y'all just figure out what that is. <laughs> that song is when he did that song i was like oh i like him i like them they jammed on that song anyway um and he's had his share of failures he has so much you know because he's a music icon he's been in it over 40 years you know more than i've been alive you know um so he's like a year younger than my mom and uh so he had a lot of success in the nine in the 80s and maybe the early 90s um but then the late 90s he put out an album and it failed it failed to reach the numbers that um music directors wanted wanted but he is still relevant he is still relevant. He is still doing his thing. Um, he's had some personal failures. You know, he had two failed marriages. He had that, if you all follow uh, Lionel Richie, that little uh, stink thing um, that occurred with this concerning his daughter, Nicole Richie and stuff. And thank God they resolved it because the heart is the heart. It doesn't matter uh, if you're biologically somebody or or not i mean it matters but it doesn't matter it does not keep a person it doesn't keep a person from loving you as their child it doesn't keep a person from protecting you and wanting what's right for you and that right there you handle it with such grace grace even though you know the child was spiral or spiraling and we all do that sometimes but still you were that calm mellow voice that she needed and that's why i really like them um and but you know there were other judges that i really didn't agree with even though i love their music right like Ma Ma uh, mariah carey was a judge in season 12 and i at, which was in 2013 which i personally felt like girl we do not need you to be a judge like you are too passionate about the music not that the other judges aren't it's just the little episodes that i saw i felt like she really wanted them to leave with something and she is such like if and this is just my opinion if she was gonna do a judge thing like that she should not be with two other people she should 
open up her Mar Mar uh, Mariah Carey School for Entertaining Artists or something like that and teach in that aspect because she was so, she gave them so much heart and she wanted them to win and whether she voted for them or not, she gave them little tidbits and she, and she is so good. She is so great with her skill that she could even match to uh, suggest that they match her as she gave a tune right which she gave more than she prop than the time actually allotted her and i think that because she wanted to give so much you know they're on time restraints i know that they do a lot of editing but i don't think that she was she she could give everything that she wanted to give in doing this show you know so and i think it would have been better if she was on her own platform that's just my opinion and then in 2010 for the auditions and i don't know why she didn't went, go on to judge because uh for season nine mary j blige she did she did the auditions but i'm gonna tell you what i think because later on she was replaced with ellen degeneres right and you know ellen to my knowledge she's not a music she's an entertainer but she's not a singer and i just felt like it was odd odd replacing her but you know she was available and they were like kind of grasping at straws it probably was a, a knee-jerk reaction i mean you know that's my opinion you know they just need to get somebody to fill that seat and they did um and i am glad that mary j blige left it because you know she was like um, um mariah carey in the auditions wanting the best wanted to leave them with tidbits did not want to say anything that could ruin their career because while that even though they weren't the person that was auditioning the way what i saw in their eyes and heard in their voice is they saw themselves selves in there and they wanted to convey to that um to that contestant which which words that they wish they would have heard especially with mary because she didn't want to damper her because she know a no today can be a yes tomorrow and yes we're talking about the american idol dream and i shared to you three success stories um i mean you know so i just like what um mariah carey i believe that if mary wanted to do something she should something like that she should be on her own platform because it would allow her to shine and do which what, what she really came um on american idol auditions to do thing i know about failure and i'm gonna tell y'all this is the lessons about failure failure can lead to success Failure can cause you to reevaluate your plan. Failure can give you new insights that data may or may not have been available before you tried whatever you failed at. And it can also open your eyes to what you really want. So failure can be necessary. It can be necessary. So I want to thank you all for joining me, for sipping on your tea, your morning tea, where you grab your cup, put two hot tea bags, a little honey for sweetness, and sipped on that tea, honey. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Victory chat with jackie remember your victory starts here don't forget to subscribe to this podcast i'll see you next time go getters goodbye <laughs>